Well, praise God. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our program today. And thank you so much for joining us. We believe and we trust that you'll be blessed by God's precious word this morning. I want to encourage you just before we commence with the program to please get your Bible ready, get your notebook and get your pen as we prepare our hearts to receive God's word. Before we go into the word of God, can we just bow our heads in the word of prayer? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we give you all praise, we give you all glory, we give you all the honor. We thank you, Lord of God, for your precious word. I thank you that every word which proceeds from your mouth is breathed of you. O oh Lord God, it has your life within it. I thank you this morning as we, Lord God, receive your word as your word is sown in the fertile ground of our hearts that lord the word will grow to cause us to grow to increase to flourish and to prosper in the things of god we thank you now O oh lord that your word will accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent in jesus blessed name we pray amen wow praise god hallelujah you can go with me to the book of uh, judges and I want to read uh, from the 15th chapter about Samson and I want to pick up from verse number 9 now the Philistines went up and camped in Judah and deployed themselves against Lehi and the men of Judah said why have you come up against us so they answered we have come up to arrest Samson, to, to do to him as he has done to us. Then 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of Etam and said to Samson, Do you know that the Philistines rule over us? What is this you have done to us? And Samson responded and he said, As they did to me, so I have done to them. But they said to him, We have come down to arrest you, that we may deliver you into the hand of the Philistines. Then Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not kill me yourselves. So they spoke to him, saying, No, but we will tie you securely and deliver you into their hand, but we will surely not kill you. And they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up on the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax that is burned with fire, and his bonds broke loose from his hands. He found the fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand, and took it, and killed a thousand men with it. Wow, praise God. One thousand men against one man. The Bible says here that Samson was bound. They bound him to his hand. He was bound with two new ropes. And when they handed him over to the Philistines, the Philistines had probably, I'm sure they were rejoicing and saying, wow, we finally got him back. But the Bible, the story doesn't just end there. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. And when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, the ropes became like flax that is burned with fire. And his bonds broke loose from his hands. The anointing of God's Spirit, the Word of God declares, breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing breaks the yoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you, now having been born again, having been washed in the blood of Jesus, having been born by the Spirit of God, you are filled with the Spirit of God. You have the anointing of God upon your life. The anointing is the presence of God upon your life that enables you to do the supernatural. 
It means you do things not in your own strength, not in your own ability, but you now have the life of God in you. The Bible says that God is spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. You have the spirit of God within you. The Holy Spirit, he sets you free. Therefore, it doesn't matter what the enemy brings up against you. Just like Samson, probably the enemy will bring, he can try and bring, he, he can try his best shot, but he'll never have the upper hand over you. The Bible says the men of Judah took two new ropes, brand new ropes, tied his hands. <laughs> Praise God. And when the Spirit of the Lord came up, came upon Samson, those bonds were broken. It became, it became like flax burned in the fire. Hallelujah. That means there's nothing new that the enemy can try to bring up against you. There's no, there's no new strategy that Satan can use to come up against you. Hallelujah. There's nothing new that he can bring up against you that will prosper. Because the word of God says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Praise God. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Samson saw a donkey jawbone. <laughs> he saw a donkey jawbone. But he didn't just leave it there. It's the same probably with you this morning. You're facing something or something has come up against you. You have the word of God at your disposal. You see, Samson saw that donkey jawbone there. He didn't just leave it lying there. My word to you this morning is don't just leave your Bible lying there. Don't just leave the word of God lying there. Take up the word of God and wield it as a sword. It is the sword of the spirit. Wield it up and hold up the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Samson went for a donkey, the jawbone of a donkey. A donkey is stubborn. What is God telling you this morning? The Lord is telling you this morning to be stubborn with your faith. Let me share something with you from the book of Romans chapter number 4. Romans 4. Praise God. Keep your finger there. Romans 4. And I want to just share something quickly from the book of Jeremiah um, chapter number 15. And I want to read verse 16. Jeremiah says, Your words were found. Oh. Your words were found and I ate them. Don't allow the word of God to just lie one side in your life. Go for the word and eat it. Don't just read it. Eat it. Meditate upon it. Speak it to yourself. Speak it to your circumstance. Speak it over your life. Speak it over your children. Speak it over your spouse. Speak it over your place of employment. Speak it over your city. Speak it over your business. Hallelujah. Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Receive with meekness and gladness. The ingrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Jeremiah knew, he says, I'm called by your name. That's why the word of God was a joy to him. Because he knew his calling was the word. His diet was the word. Your diet, my diet, ought to be the word of God. Romans chapter number 4 and verse 20. Speaking of Abraham, the Bible says, Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. It means Abraham was stubborn with his faith. He was stubborn with his faith. It means nobody could convince him otherwise. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. We serve a God who's a performer of his word. 
If you can just take the word of God this morning and apply it to your situation, apply it to your circumstance, the word will perform exactly what it has been sent to do. The word of God will accomplish what God has spoken at forth to do in your life. The thing is, God, God gives you his word. He says, take, eat. It's exactly the same at the Lord's table. When Jesus, the Bible says, when Jesus was seated at the table, he took bread and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take, eat. It's an offer. It's an offer. He is offering you something. He's offering me something. He's offering us life. When God gives you his word, he's telling you, take. Take my word. Eat it. Digest it. Allow the word to digest in your spirit. Because when you allow that to happen, friends, you become what the word says you are. You become who the word says you are. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. When supper was ended, the Bible says Jesus took the cup. And after he blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood given for the remission of the sins of the world. Do this often in remembrance of me. Friends, often means it's not a once off. Walking with God is not a once off. Reading the word of God is not a once off. You know, many folk, they allow the word of God to sit one side in their lives. And when they faced with challenges, then they run for the word. And they use the word of God as a fire extinguisher to quench the fire. But as long as you are not servicing your spirit with the word of God, that fire is extinguisher, it is of no use. It is fruitless. Because by then, the enemy has already got the upper hand over your life. When you daily meditate upon the word of God, let it seep deep within your being. When the enemy comes up against you, he'll not be able to prevail against you. Because the spirit of God, who wrote this word and inscribed it on the tablets of your heart, is the same spirit who will raise a standard that the enemy cannot meet, he cannot match. Hallelujah. No new strategy that the enemy uses will come up against you. Right now in the world, there are many sicknesses, many diseases. Every day, the names are changing. But God has exalted Jesus and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father, praise God, praise God, praise God. My friend, this morning my word to you is hold on. When I'm saying hold on. I don't mean that, you, that you're holding on because of desperation that, oh, you're going to die now or something is going to happen to you. No, I'm saying hold on, hold on, be joyful, hold on because God is about to perform his word in your life. If you will just dare to believe God this morning, if you will just dare to receive his word this morning and not just receive it, but believe it, see it coming to pass. See See yourself the way God sees you. When God sees you, he sees you through the blood. In the book of Exodus, God instructed Moses to instruct the nation of Israel. Each family was supposed to, they, they were to choose a lamb without spot, without blemish. And they were supposed to Take the blood of the lamb and apply it on the doorposts and the lintels of their home. The doorposts and the lintel. Speaking of the cross. And God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over your houses. He says, when I see the blood, I will not permit the enemy to come into your houses. That's Exodus 12, 23. 
I will not allow the enemy to come into your houses. That means no sickness will come into your home. No lack will come into your home. No poverty will come into your home. Because you are in covenant with a God of the miraculous. You are in covenant with a supernatural God. It doesn't matter what you're going through this morning. You can take the word of God and be stubborn. It doesn't matter. The pain may, it may feel like it's getting worse. But you confess I am the healed of the Lord. I am the healed of the Lord. By his stripes, I was healed. I was healed. You were healed 2,000 years ago at Calvary's cross. There's nothing that the enemy can put upon you that the blood of Jesus hasn't fulfilled for you. Hallelujah. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. In other words, you remember his death. His remem remembering his death means that I bring to remembrance, I recollect what his blood has purchased for me. His blood has purchased redemption for me. The word of God says, without the blood, there is no remission of sin. The, in the book of Leviticus, the word, say, the word of God says, the life of all flesh is in the blood. And Jesus said, unless you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man, you have no life in you. Because of the blood, we have eternal life. You can be like Samson this morning. Stand upon the covenant you have with God. Stand on the covenant. Covenant means that God has sworn by himself to honor his word in your life. It means a covering from God. It means protection from God. Covenant gives you a sense of belonging. You belong to the family of God now. No devil in hell can stand up against you. Hallelujah. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 5, the Lord says to Joshua, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. All the days of your life means for all eternity, no man will be able to stand up to stand up before you. He says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. God is saying, what I did for Moses, I can do for you this morning. What I did for Joshua, I can do for you this morning. Those walls of Jericho had to fall. They fell. If there's a wall that's standing before you this morning, that wall will fall. Praise God. If God did it for Joshua, he'll do it for you. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if the enemy tried to bind you or tried to imprison you. Praise God. The Spirit of God sets you free. The Spirit of the Lord sets you free. Samson took the donkey jawbone and he slew 1,000 Philistines. David I'm going to close shortly. David, in the book of 1 Samuel, praise the Lord, hallelujah. 1 Samuel 17, watch what David says, verse 45. You see, that's what allowed David to overcome Goliath. All the nation of Israel were in fear. They were in covenant, they were in covenant with God. But they were not standing on the covenant. You see, there's a difference. It was only young David who understood his covenant. He stood on the covenant. All the nation of Israel stood there and they saw Goliath. Goliath blaspheming against God. But when David got there to the battleground, he even asked the question, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And how dare he defy the Lord God of Israel? Verse number 45, then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear and a javelin. You come to me with a sword, with a spear and with a javelin, three things. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. 
I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David was saying, I'm bringing judgment to you. I'm serving notice to you. I'm serving notice to you. Today is your day. Serve notice on the devil. He cannot touch you. He cannot harm you. There's nothing he can do to you. Praise God. Goliath came with three things. A sword, a spear, and a javelin. David came to him in the name of the Lord. The God. The triune God. God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. When you understand that you are in covenant with God and any enemy that comes up against you, you understand that the word of God says, Hallelujah, he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. If any enemy wants to get to you, they've got to go through God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit to get to you. You are covered by God Almighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You've been encapsulated in the love of God. You've been encapsulated in the grace of God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. Abraham was stubborn with his, with, with his faith. And that made him a friend of God. So, dear friends, this morning I want to encourage you. Be stubborn with your faith. Don't let down your God. Hold up the shield of faith. You see, Rahab asked the two spies who came to spy the land. She asked them, Joshua 2 verse 12. She said, give me a token. Give me a sign. So that I know that my father's house will be spared. And everybody connected to me will be spared. And we'll be saved from death. She wanted something tangible, something that she could touch, something that she could connect with. And God has given you and I something tangible, something that we can connect with. And that is the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, and his body, which was broken for us. His broken body brings us wholeness. His broken body brings us wholeness and completeness. His blood brings us salvation. Salvation. He brings us redemption. Brings us salvation. He brings us deliverance. You are saved. You are healed. You are delivered by the blood of Jesus. Praise God this morning for the blood of Jesus. I want to encourage you every day. Make this your daily diet. The body and the blood of Jesus. Proclaim his death until he comes. Because every time you bring to remembrance, you bring to remembrance who you are in Christ. You bring to remembrance what Christ has done what Christ has wrought for you at the cross. You bring to remembrance what is rightfully yours. You bring to remembrance what you're entitled to as a child of God. Don't let the enemy steal it from you, child of God. But take it by faith this morning. Take it by faith. Receive it by faith. Be made whole by faith. Be made well by faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to encourage you in your home. Get some bread. Get some juice, grape juice. Doesn't matter if you've got water. Use water. Doesn't matter what it is. These are mere, this is symbolic. These are signs of his body, which was broken for us. His blood, which was shed for us. So, Get some in your home and let us share the Lord's table. Let us celebrate together. And let us partake of the feast God has prepared for us. 
Hallelujah. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you that the bread that we break, which we eat, it becomes for us the body of your Son, Jesus Christ. The cup of drink that we bless and drink, it becomes for us the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the power of the cross. Thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus. The blood which speaks of better things than the blood of animal sacrifices. Thank you that this blood has obtained for us mercy and redemption and brought us into right standing with you. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Every promise of God in Christ Jesus is yea and amen. That means so be it. Let us toast to victory, the victory that Christ has purchased for us. An eternal victory, not a temporal one. An eternal one, eternal life, to eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, if you're watching this telecast and you haven't received the Lord Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity this morning to make things right with God. You may say, but I'm not yet ready. He didn't ask you to be ready. He says, come as you are, come. You know, it's amazing. It's an amazing account in the Gospels is where Jesus calls his disciples. They were mere fishermen, ordinary fishermen. He didn't ask them to be ready. He just said to them, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. In other words, follow me, and you'll catch bigger fish. Follow me, and you'll have a greater future, you'll have a greater life. And that is what God has given us in Christ Jesus, his son. It is eternal life. The Greek is Zoe life, the God kind of life. That means life to the full until it overflows. A nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking life. Life as God has life. That is the life that God offers us and avails to us in Christ, His Son. So if that's you this morning, if you say, I want to make things right with God this morning, but I've drifted, I've missed the mark. It's never too late with God. So I want to invite you, just say this prayer with me. The Bible says, if you will believe in your heart, you will confess with your mouth, you will confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So let us just pray. Father, just repeat after me. Father God, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your son. According to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. And right now, Lord Jesus, I open the doors of my heart to you. And I ask you to come into my heart, come into my life. I receive you now to be my personal Lord and Savior. I thank you that you are now seated on the throne of my heart. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. 
I thank you that by your blood, every sin I've ever committed has been removed from the memory of my life. Satan, you have no unsettled claims against me. I plead the blood of Jesus right now. And I embrace the eternal life that Jesus Christ has purchased for me. I decree from this moment on, I am born again. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. You know what just happened, friend? You know when you stand in a court of law, you normally ask the question, how do you plead? And people would normally, the response normally is, you either plead guilty or you plead not guilty. And what you've just done now is, because we've all sinned, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 3. But here's the, here's, here's the issue. You stood this morning in the court of God. And when asked the question, how do you plead? Because Satan, the accuser, he made the case. But he's got no case against you. Because all you responded was, you didn't say I'm guilty or I'm not guilty. All you said was, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. It is the blood that has done the work for us. It is the blood that has purchased us for us. Amen. He's purchased us for eternal life. Hallelujah. You've been prepared for eternal life. So if you've prayed that prayer, I want to encourage you. The details are coming up the screen just after the telecast. Connect with us. Write us a WhatsApp. Send us a WhatsApp. Send us a text message. Or send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, send us your details. And we'd like to uh, bless you with a gift. So just send us your details. And just share with us what the Lord has done for you. And uh, connect with the church. If you pray this prayer just now, connect in your local place where you are. Connect with uh, a good, solid, uh, Bible-based, faith-based, Bible-teaching church. Connect with the church and begin to grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo saying I love you very much and God's richest blessings be upon you. Amen. Mm -hmm.